understand if you weren't at yesterday's presentation, uh, we need to kind of uh, repeat a little bit of, of material. Uh, today we're going to talk about a subject called taxonomies. And uh, I want to give you a little bit different perspective of taxonomies than you probably were expecting. I want to give you a very practical, pragmatic uh, uh, understanding of taxonomies. I've brought some examples along with me uh, so you'll be able to see them. Uh, so let me tell you uh, a little bit about taxonomies. Uh, why do we need taxonomies? Uh, when we are going into the world of textual information, uh, uh, when you are looking at text, uh, uh, you need a way of understanding and deciphering that text. And so that's, that's what a taxonomy is. Uh, in, in its simplest form, a taxonomy is nothing but a classification. And so uh, uh, if you look, at, look up taxonomy in the dictionary and whatever you say, a taxonomy is a classification of data. And, 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 and it is, that, that's what it is. Uh, but you, then, then you ask another question, why should I be concerned about a taxonomy? It's taxonomies that are the primary way in which we take text and turn text into data that can be analyzed. Now, having stated that, there's actually quite a bit of other things that we need to do to text. Taxonomies are probably 50% of the battle, but they're only 50%. And so we're not going to talk about, uh, to any great extent at all, about the other things you need to do to text so today. We're going to talk just about uh, taxonomies, uh, what they are, more importantly, why we need them, and, and, and then finally we're going to talk about uh, it from a standpoint of an example, because it's with taxonomies uh, that you're able to uh, uh, take textual data and make sense of textual data. Let's talk ever so briefly about uh, textual data. In the corporation today, uh, most corporations have made no use whatsoever of textual data. In most corporations, uh, the, there's textual data out there. Uh, people know it's out there, but they don't do anything with it. And, and from a standpoint of, uh, uh, from a standpoint of missing major business opportunities, corporation after corporation is, is uh, missing major opportunities by not looking at and taking advantage of their textual information. Some of the places where uh, this textual information comes into play are things like emails. There's a, there's a wealth of information in the emails and corporations don't do anything with their emails. Another place where there's a lot of textual information uh, uh, is in the area of corporate contracts. And I, I, uh, one of my pet peeves in life is, is managers and, and presidents of corporation. Uh, you go to the president of the corporation and you say, uh, do you know what's in your corporate contracts? And, and I'll be honest with you, I've not, I've not ever talked to one C-level officer that knows what's in their corporate contracts. And then you say, well, w w w wait a minute, Mr. or Ms. President, isn't it your job to understand such things as corporate liability? Oh, yeah, it's our job to understand corporate liability. Well, where is that liability outlined? It's outlined in, in our corporate contracts. But you can't know what's in your corporate contracts. And, and, and why can't you know what's in your corporate contracts? Because it's in the form of text, and nobody knows how to get in and look at text. So emails, corporate contracts, medical records, customer feedback, uh, there are a hundred places where there's textual information out there that's really valuable and really important that is nobody's looking at today. And, and you know, if you are an entrepreneur-minded person and you want to make an impact in your corporation, uh, looking for value in textual information 
is, uh, uh, is, is kind of uh, like looking for gold in California in 1848. It wasn't until 1849 that the world uh, discovered that there was gold in California uh, and, and had the great land rush uh, across the United States. But in 1848, uh, if you'd have been uh, sharp, you know, I, we are told, I, I don't know if you ever heard this story or not, uh, but, but in 1848, it was actually possible uh, to walk through the streams of California and just pick up nuggets of gold.